Good morning. Welcome to worship. Let me share a few announcements with you before we begin our worship this morning. Um, first of all, tomorrow is the annual Martin Luther King Jr. March here in Cincinnati. Uh, on page 23 in the back of your worship folder, there is some information about the march. Um, I will be marching behind the A Mighty Stream banner. Uh, we are a member congregation in A Mighty Stream, an interreligious organization here in Cincinnati that works for racial harmony. Um, there are very few Christian churches in the organization, and we are the only Lutheran church in A Mighty Stream, but a great organization. And if any of you'd like to join me, just look for the A Mighty Stream banner, and uh, that's where we'll be at 10.30 tomorrow morning. And it won't be the coldest day of the winter, as it usually is. Reminder from Ted Joncha that our men's Bible study is beginning its winter and spring session. Uh, they're starting on Monday, January 23rd at 7.30. They will be studying the book, Following the Way of Jesus by Michael Curry, uh, Bishop of the Episcopal Church. If you've got any questions, Ted is here this morning. You can speak with him about that. Reminder that our January Monday meals is coming up. It'll be on January 30th. Sign up chart to bring food uh, is out in the Northex. There's also a sign up genius. The link is in the back of the worship folder. And a very early reminder to save the date for a wills, estate planning, and charitable giving presentation that's going to be offered by three of our members, Steve Ray, Jim McKellis, and Dan Altenau. Uh, that's going to take place on Saturday, February 11th at 9 in the morning. We've got plenty of time before that, but this morning, just a reminder to save the date. Saturday, February 11th, 9 a.m., Will's Estate Planning and Charitable Giving Presentation. Those are our announcements for this morning. Let's take a moment in silence and prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Congregation, please stand as you're able and turn and face the baptismal font. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Eternal and gracious God, we give you thanks. In countless ways you have revealed yourself in ages past and have blessed us with signs of your grace. We praise you that through the waters of the sea you led your people Israel out of bondage into freedom in the land of your promise. We praise you for sending Jesus, your son, who for us was baptized in the waters of the Jordan and was anointed as the Christ by your Holy Spirit. Through baptism of his death and resurrection, you set us free from the bondage of sin and death and give us cleansing and rebirth. We praise you that in baptism you give us your Holy Spirit, who teaches us and leads us into all truth, filling us with varieties of gifts that we might proclaim the gospel to all nations and serve you as a royal priesthood. Pour out your spirit upon us and upon this water that this font may be your womb of new birth. May all who have and will pass through these waters be delivered from death to life, from bondage to freedom, from sin to righteousness. Bind them to the household of faith. Guard them from all evil. Strengthen them to serve you with joy until the day you make all things new. To you be all praise and honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Savior who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With you. Let us pray. Holy God, our strength and our Redeemer, by your Spirit, hold us forever, that through your grace we worship you in the service of your The following persons have been elected by the congregation to positions of leadership and are asked to come forward as their office and names are read. Adam Vance, President. Amy Cheney, Vice President. Teresa Ehrenholtz, Secretary. John Kaiser, Treasurer. Jeff Johnston, Financial Secretary. Beth Ann Rammel, Accountant. Steve Crawford, Buildings and Grounds. Osa Durchi, Fellowship. Brad Nixa, Finance and Budget. Kim Volkert, via live stream in Maryland, inviting and welcoming. Ashley Robertson, Long Range Planning. Allison Best, Outreach Ministry. Melissa Fire Ovid, Parish Education. Dan Tandy, Stewardship and Mike Everett, Worship and Music. St. Paul writes, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives to everyone ability for particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith reflect him in whose name we gather. You are to work together with other members to see that the worship and work of Christ are done in this congregation and that God's will is done in this community and in the whole world. You are to be diligent in your specific area of serving, that the one Lord who empowers you is glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, to help maintain the life and harmony of this congregation. On behalf of our siblings in Christ, I ask you, are you ready to accept and faithfully to carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, answer yes by the help of God. Yes, by the help of God. Congregation, I invite you to stand. People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders? And will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, yes, by the help of God. Yes, yes by the help of God. I now declare you installed as council members of this congregation for 2023. God bless you with the Holy Spirit, that you may prove faithful servants of Christ. Amen. And thank you for your service. Hear the words in scripture. The first lesson is a reading from Isaiah chapter 49. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. 
The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Israel and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slaves of rulers, kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves. Because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you, the word of the Lord. Be to God. The second lesson is a reading from 1 Corinthians. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes. To the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all of those who in, who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I will give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him, you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Congregation, please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel for the second Sunday after the Epiphany is according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory the next day, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God! Two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, 
which is translated anointed, he brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. This is the Gospel of our Lord. kids today. <laughs> There's lots of kids today. This is much better than last time when it was just the people online and the grown-ups. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I have a very important question to ask you today. Are you ready? Okay, and it's all right if you don't know the answer yet. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> what do you want to be when you grow up? A nurse? Eng an engineer? A vet? A teacher? A what? These are all great answers. A veterinarian? These are all amazing answers. Hey, Sean. Yeah? What did you want to be? I wanted to be a paleontologist. I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? <laughs> it's what? Oh, someone that searches for fossils? Oh, that makes so much sense now. That, I get that. That makes so much sense. That explains all the toys. <clears throat> So, uh, did you become a paleontologist? No. <laughs> I wanted to, but I didn't quite get there. Oh. Well then. <laughs> well, that's not a very nice attitude to take. Do you think that's a nice, nice way he's acting? No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. You know, sometime, I wanted to be a paleontologist when I grew up. But I didn't quite make it there. My life kind of took a lot of really unexpected twists and turns. And you know what? Sometimes that happens in life. Sometimes you want to be a nurse or, or a veterinarian or an engineer. And sometimes your life may take really winding turns. <laughs> but that's OK. It is? Oh, yeah. That's OK. Because you know what? God still loves you. Oh, that's true. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you know what? The other people in your lives, your grown-ups, they still love you too. It's kind of like in that first verse. You know that person said that God knew them before they were born, before they had a name. And you know what? That person came out and they said, look, I've done all this stuff, but I still kind of failed. And did God say, well, too bad, out of heaven. Is that what God said? No. No, no, no. God loves us no matter what. That is right. Good job. And God's not the only ones either. Do we have special people in our lives that love us no matter what? Even though we may break things or yell at times we're not supposed to yell, we still have people that still smile us into smiling and love us into loving I think that's pretty cool, don't you? Oh, I think so. All right. Well, that's all I wanted to say today. So let's, let's have a big prayer. Let's pray. Ready? <gasps> Dear God, watch over these kids this week. Help them go along their paths to all the things they want to be in this life. And if they happen to stumble along the way, remind them that that's okay too. Fill their lives with love, hope, and peace. Amen. All right, let's go back to seats. Mm, 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 mm.
the right spot. I think Sean might have snuck into my study this week and read my manuscript. I'll try, I'll, try and say this, I'll try and say the same thing, but without a puppet, and maybe through a little bit different means. So we begin the Epiphany season this morning. The Epiphany season is when we focus on manifestation. How Jesus becomes known as Son of God and Savior. I like the Epiphany season because it reminds me that we ought to be aware and awake to how God wants to be manifest in our lives, in our time, in our world today. But we notice something. Before we can get to Jesus becoming manifest in compassionate healing, or wise teaching, or prophetic preaching, we begin with his baptism. Because first we have to understand that the one who is manifest is the one who is righteous. Last week we kind of looked at Jesus' baptism from Matthew's gospel. As you notice this morning, we're gonna take a second look. But this morning, from the Gospel of John. And interestingly, John tells it a bit different than the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They take us right to the Jordan River and give us a narrative of the actions that happened there. But in John's Gospel, the recitation comes through the memory of John the Baptist. And he's sharing what he remembers when he baptized Jesus. So, a second look at Jesus' baptism this morning. I want to begin with a story. A really big, really feel-good story. But I promise you that by the end of the story, we'll find our way to the baptismal font. It's a story about an NFL football player. He was playing in a game and he made a very ordinary tackle. But when he stood up, he suffered cardiac arrest and he fell back down on the field and the emergency medical technicians and the doctors rushed onto the field and they gave him mouth to mouth resuscitation and they shocked his heart and they brought it back to beating once again. An ambulance came on the field and took the player off and brought him to the hospital. And a nation waited and prayed. And on the third day, <laughs> on the third day, he opened his eyes and he was intubated so he wasn't able to speak he wrote down his very first question who won the game I mean just take a moment and think about that will you his very first question was who won the game and the doctor said to him, you won the game, DeMar. You won the game of life. Now, unless you've been living under a rock for the last two weeks, <laughs> you all know that story very well. What you might not know about that story is the doctor who said those words is one of us. Dr. Tim Pritz is a member of our congregation. You won the game of life. Those were the perfect words for that moment. 
Those were profound words for that moment. Knowing Tim Pritz and knowing his faith and his sense of vocation. Once the dust settled, I sent him an email and I said, Tim, I believe that God created you for that moment. You have won the game of life. I'm sure all of you have noticed that gambling has become ubiquitous in our culture. You can play mega millions and win a billion. You can now go to your favorite sports book and play your favorite team or go down the street to the casino and win a bunch of money. Truth of the matter is, you're far more likely to lose your shirt. And it troubles me deeply that our culture is now glorifying yet another addictive behavior. But I digress. That's another sermon for another day. <laughs> you can win a billion unless you take the cash option, then you only get a few hundred million. But that pales in comparison to winning the game of life. In the grace of God, through answered prayer and excellent medical care, number three of the Buffalo Bills is still with us. You won the game of life. I'm sure you all heard Tim Pritz say those words, <laughs> whether it was on ESPN or the national news or the local news or cable news or viral on the internet. And when I heard Tim say those words, a siren, an alarm went off in my head and my very first reaction was baptismal font. Wasn't that your first reaction too? <laughs> right? Maybe not. Pastor Nicole and I are probably the only two theology wonks and geeks in this congregation, but that's your fault. You pay us to think that way. You won the game of life. Baptismal font. We say that here at the font, we die with Christ and we rise with Christ. That's new life. We say here at the font, we receive the Spirit of God. And that the light of Jesus shines in each and every one of us. We say that here at the font, we're given a new name, child of God. And as St. John says, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. By God's grace and through the baptism of Jesus, each of you have won the game of life. And nobody can ever take that away from you. In baptism, Jesus was given a new name, Son of God. In baptism, you have received a new name, Child of God. 
If you have come under these waters, whether at a font or a river or a lake, you have become a child of God. That is a fact, and nobody can ever take that away from you. Many years ago, one of our members went to the Holy Land and they brought me back this very strange gift, a jug of water from the Jordan River. And ever since, every time we've had a baptism, I pour a few drops of that water into the baptismal font. I want you to put on your imagination cap for a moment and think about this that because the water from the Jordan River evaporates and then it comes back down to earth in the form of rain and that that has been happening for over 2,000 years at the Jordan River it might be very well possible that there is a molecule of water that touched the body of Jesus in his baptism that is now in this bowl of water. Now, I'm not talking about magic. I'm talking about hopeful imagination. They say that a picture is worth a thousand words. Maybe a ritual action is worth a thousand pictures. The best thing that we can possibly do is to remember our baptism. Kate, you're a child of God. Pat, you've received the Holy Spirit. Kayanne, you've won the game of life. Child of God, you've won the game. You've received the Holy Spirit. Kaiser and Ganim family and treasurer, you've received the Holy Spirit. Melissa, you shine God's light. You are a child of God. Child of God, you've received the Holy Spirit. You are God's beloved. Cheney family, children of God. Matt, you shine God's light. Connie and Jim, children of God. You shine God's light. You are God's beloved. You've received the Holy Spirit. Children of God, shine God's light. You've won the game of life. God's beloved, you shine God's light. Eric, child of God, Emily received the Holy Spirit. Child of God, you've won the game of life. Child of God. Out of God. You've won the game of life. Shine God's light. Aaron, you're a child of God. President, you're definitely a child of God. <laughs> Trish, receive God's spirit. Child of God. Even the pastor needs a reminder. You've received God's spirit. You're a child of God. God bless you. Colin, child of God. And Pat Fire Ovid and the Laybourns. Who else, Kurt? Ah, yeah, Stu, 
and Gail Coford, and everybody else on the live stream. You're children of God. You received the Holy Spirit. You won the game of life. Did you notice in the reading this morning that Simon got a new name? Jesus said that Simon's new name was Cephas in the Aramaic, <coughs> Peter in the Greek, the rock. Each of you has received a new name. You are a child of God. You are beloved. There's a story about a pastor's retreat that took place many, many years ago. At the beginning of the retreat, the spiritual director said to these pastors, over the next three days, I would like you to think of a name from the Bible that you cannot do without. A name that is essential to your life. And on the third day at the end of the retreat, the pastor sat in a circle and they put a chair in the center. And one by one, those pastors got up and they shared that name that they could not live without. And finally, they got around to a young pastor who sat down in the center and he put his head down and he sat there in silence. For so long that the silence became uncomfortable. And the spiritual director finally said to him, what about you? Tell us the name that you can't live without. And he said, I couldn't find one to replace the name that my father gave me from childhood. Because I heard it over and over again. My name is never good enough. Maybe some of you feel that way this morning, or you have felt that way in life before. I'm not certain that sprinkling a few drops of water on you is going to change that. You've felt that you let yourself down that you let God down, that you let your loved ones down, that you ruined relationships, that you fell into the rabbit hole of an addictive behavior, that you're broken and lost and lonely, that you're never good enough. After the retreat was over, the spiritual director went to that pastor and said, did that help you at all when we laid hands on you and said that you're God's beloved? And he said, I can't let go of the name that my father gave me. But every time I put my hands in the font for a baptism, I will remember that I am God's beloved, that in me God is well pleased. If you've come under those waters, you've won the game of life. God is well pleased with you. Did you notice something curious about how the Gospel of John tells this story? Jesus goes immediately from his baptism in the Jordan to calling the first apostles. Something in between is missing, right? In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, something happens in between. The temptation. Jesus is tempted before he begins his ministry. In other words, before he can perform any epiphanies, any manifestations, be known as the Son of God, First, 
he is declared faithful and righteous. There's something that we say about living the baptismal life. We call it walking wet. That's how we Christians go through life. We walk wet. We are different people when we leave the baptismal font. Not perfect, but named and claimed. And so we are called to walk wet, to walk faithfully and in righteousness because you are God's beloved. You have already won the game of life. Praise be to Jesus. Live into your baptism. Walk wet. Amen.
our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. follow Jesus. We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God in heaven, who called Christ beloved and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, shower your grace upon the faithful throughout the world that we might walk wet. We pray for St. Peter and St. Paul Church in Zarentine, Germany, and Pastor Jürgen Meister. Navajo Evangelical Church and Mission in Rock Point, Arizona, and Pastor Kate Adelman. Our missionaries, the Doppenbergs in Guatemala. Allen Temple AME Church and Pastor Al Allen. And with St. Matthew Lutheran Church in Dartown and Pastor Rita Bear. Merciful God. God who wills peace among us and who birthed peace in Mary. Give wisdom to leaders of nations that justice and peace might prevail on earth, especially in Ukraine. Comfort, O oh compassionate God, those who are long-suffering. Merciful God. Creator God, bring restoration to communities in our nation that have been ravaged by flooding and tornadoes. Keep first responders safe and comfort those who have sustained loss. As we seek to restart our creation care ministry in this congregation, give passion and wisdom to our team for this important mission work. Merciful God. God who speaks through faithful prophets, we remember the life and courageous witness of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., martyr and renewer of the church, and all who continue the work for civil rights today. Bless the efforts of Anderson Churches for Racial Unity, a mighty stream, and all organizations and people who are passionate to pursue unity among all people. Merciful God. Healing God, we pray for the continued progress and healing for Damar Hamlin as he has asked us to do. We are thankful for the medical care that allowed him to win the game of life. We pray for others that we know and love, that you would continue to sustain their lives, especially Joyce Anderson, Diane Ross, Ace Hamilton, Gil Stegnero, Christopher Irwin, Steve Jones, John Glynn, Marty Kochevar, Barb Laughlin, Betty Langley, Carolyn Vance, Ed Heestand, Susan Adams, Zach and Amelia Doppenberg, Kim Volkert, Genevieve Jewett, Karen Woodworth, Kay Lucason, Jennifer Wagner, David Vinoli, Phil Harper, Mark McCall, Wanda Bowl, Debbie Hippensteel, Al Berg, David Pritz, Sherry Storm, Maddie Boren, Scott Anderson, Peggy Menke, Charlie Mirabel, Dale Ebersol, Bert Shirilla, Lori Durden, Alex Boren, Claire and Todd Sutherland, Ray Sund, Barbara Henricks, Larry Walker, and Julie Reynolds. Merciful God. Holy One, you call the church into being through your spirit. We give you thanks for the gospel work of First Lutheran Church in Kearney, New Jersey, a congregation formative to the faith and life of Harry and Judy Von Bush. As that congregation disbands, we pray your blessings on those who grieve, and we pray that they will find another church family. 
Every time the bells chime in this sanctuary, we trust that the legacy of First Lutheran Church lives in our midst. Merciful God, God of Epiphany, you are made known to us through love. We thank you for teaching us to love and to live in love. We rejoice with Lorraine and Mike Everett as they celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. Continue to bless them with deep faith and good health. Merciful God. Comforting God for those present who have known the name never good enough. I pray that the drops of healing may assure them of your heartfelt desire. All who walk wet are good enough on earth and in heaven. May we be the body of Christ that is good enough to each other. Merciful God, we bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. For those departing on the live stream, we wish you God's blessing in the week ahead. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloveds, we have gathered together around our many tables, here and in our homes, trusting that through the power of the Holy Spirit, God is building a great table, one that transcends the distance between us. When Jesus took the bread and broke it in the presence of those disciples he walked with on the Emmaus Road, they recognized him. May we, those who gather around Christ's spiritual table, recognize him in this meal that unites us in Christ and with one another. May we find in this meal both compassion and joy, strength and consolation, healing and wholeness, as we walk together in the light of God's love. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places 
Offer thanks and praise, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O holy God, you are the life and light of all. By the powerful words you created all things. Through the prophets you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your son. He is your light shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising and his promise to come again. We await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your spirit, bless us and this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Jesus said to his disciples, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. May the peace of the risen Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another as you're comfortable and in the chat on the live stream. God's peace. God's peace, come. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace, Julian. Cute hair. New haircut? Yeah. It's cute, though.
gifts of God for the people of God. Come, see and taste. All are welcome. We are on the live stream, the body of Christ broken for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Lord God, in the waters of baptism and in this meal of bread and wine, the body and blood of your Son, we hear your words spoken over us that we are your beloveds. May that knowledge transform us and transform our relationship with the world. In Jesus' name.
in this meal of bread and wine, the body and blood of your Son, we hear your voice spoken over us that we are your beloveds. May it transform us and change us. May we go into the world to share your transforming love with others. In Jesus' name. Congregation, please stand as you're able. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and walk wet with you. And now receive the blessing. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. child of God. Thanks be to God. And this week, walk wet. wet.